There are many ways in which learning how to meditate is like learning how to master a foreign language. So you're trying to speak a foreign language. It's not simply a matter of speaking. You also have to learn how to evaluate what you're saying, evaluate what you hear from the native speakers. That means training your ear. The training the ear here is the factor of evaluation. And as John Lee notes, the evaluation factor in concentration practice grows out of the alertness in mindfulness practice. In other words, your ability to be sensitive to what you're doing, the results of what you're doing. The evaluation builds on that as you learn how to adjust. See what's working, see what's not working. First, as you try to get the mind to stay with its object. And then as you learn how to adjust both your focus and the object, in this case the breath. The breath is one of those unusual bodily functions that is both automatic and can be willed. So it's an ideal object for learning how the factor of will enters into your experience. But it's also an ideal object for screwing yourself up. If there's too much will and not enough observation, you can force the breath into all kinds of weird configurations. So you have to learn how to listen. It's like, again, like learning how to read. How do you read the language of the mind? How do you listen to the language of the mind, the language of the body? On the one hand, you can learn lessons from outside. This is like a teacher teaching you the foreign language. But it's not simply a matter of mastering the grammar. You also have to master how to apply the grammar to a particular situation, a particular sentence. And for people learning English, one of the big problems is how to use the word the. When to use the word the, when to use the word a, uh, when you don't have any articles. And there are rules, but they're pretty complex. And the way to master it is just to listen to native speakers speak and then try to say what you want to say. Learn when the comes in and when a uh comes in. And then get advice from the native speakers that you do it right. Because what may seem right from your interpretation of the grammatical rules may not actually work out. Because there's no natural language that is totally consistent. So you learn by trying, trial and error. And you also learn by trial and success. And it's the same with the meditation. We take the meditation instructions and then we apply it. And on the one hand, we have to simply learn how to adjust things and evaluate things on our own. What's working? What way of focusing on the breath puts you to sleep? What way of focusing on the breath can wake you up? What way of focusing on the breath can put too much tension in different parts of the body? What ways of focusing on the breath can relieve that tension? Part of that comes from evaluating on your own. Part of it comes from getting advice. But ultimately, you also have to learn how to evaluate the, the advice, see what's working for you, what's not working for you. It's a balancing act, as is every skill in the world. What helps you progress in language learning, and the same in the meditation, is this power of evaluation. As you 
Learn how to listen to yourself. And make adjustments. This is the beginning of discernment. It starts out with simple things. Which way of breathing feels best for the body right now? And as you work with that question, you find yourself getting more and more sensitive to breath energy in the body. And exactly what does it mean, this breath energy in the body? What are the different ways it has of working? You can look at a John Lee's instructions on breath meditation. And he started out with one method, and then after a while worked out a second method, which he developed after he'd had a heart attack. And many of his instructions for dealing with the breath energy in the body are perfect for people who are having heart problems. But then you read some of his later Dharma talks and he switches everything around. For example, in the Method 2 he talks about spreading the breath down the back, starting with the back of the skull, the base of the skull, and just down the backbone and out the legs. And in one of his later talks, he talks about the breath energy that comes out from the soles of the feet and comes up the back all the time, whether you're breathing in or breathing out. In other words, part of learning the language of the mind and the language of the body is having lots of different ways of conceiving the body, conceiving the breath energy, and figuring out which way is going to work at which time. And if you find something causing tension, something causing problems, well, learn how to reverse it. The instruction on breathing in the back of the skull is good for people who are trying too hard to pull the breath in from the nose. That can create a certain pattern of tension with a lot of tension building up in the back of the neck and the shoulders. And breathing through the back of the neck and down the backbone is one way of relieving that tension. But then trying to pull the breath down in the lower back many times, that's a problem. So switch it around. Think of the energy coming up from the soles of the feet, up through the backbone and up out the top of the head. And John Fung used to recommend sometimes, in your mind's eye, cutting off the top of your head, leaving it wide open. And see what that does for the breath energy in the body. In other words, there's a lot to play with here. And what makes the playing a useful part of the meditation is your ability to evaluate the results. How does this help? When is this useful? When is it not useful? Again, you can get some advice from outside, but a lot of this has to come from your learning how to evaluate your own powers of evaluation. As you develop a more and more refined sense of what works, what it means for a technique to work. And this segues right into the develop of development of discernment. As you can see, which motions of the mind are helpful, which motions are not helpful, which ones add to stress, and which ones help to relieve stress. In other words, you're starting to see the motions of your mind in terms of the Four Noble Truths. Cause and effect, skillful and unskillful. As you start evaluating the motions of the mind, not only as they relate to the breath, but as they relate to everything, how they relate to the contact of forms and eyes, sounds and ears, aromas and nose, tastes and tongue tactile sensations in body. How do you evaluate what you build on the basis of those contacts? That's all a matter of evaluation as well. 
You can't hope to be told simply, well, here's the meditation technique, and you just beat the mind into submission with the technique and hope that some sort of discernment is going to come out of that. The whole point of practicing concentration is learning how to read the mind, reading cause and effect, and developing your sensitivities to cause and effect, and particularly to your actions as causes and the results in terms of stress or lack of stress. That kind of sensitivity can be developed only by working with the breath, playing with the breath. and evaluating the results of what you get as you play, as you work. Again, it's like mastering a foreign language. An important part of being able to speak a foreign language is learning to listen to what you say with the ears of that other language. As in learning Thai. learning how the falling tones should sound, learning how the rising tones should sound, long vowels, short vowels. And learning when you break what are the standard rules. And what happens to tones, say, at the end of a sentence. So as you're meditating, remember you're learning a new language here. After all, what is the language of the breath? That's one area of our experience that doesn't lend itself. To the vocabulary we have. So you have to listen to it on its own terms. Develop the ears, the inner ears and the inner eyes of a person who's really sensitive to the breath. And from there you get more and more sensitive to your own mind. You learn how to read the mind. Eventually your discernment develops qualities called knowledge and vision. And here again John Lee makes the connection that the vision is seeing what's going on, the knowledge is realizing what it means. That comes from your ability to be alert, see connections, evaluate, see what works, what doesn't work. That's what it means to master the language of the mind, learning how to use the mind so it doesn't cause suffering. It's one of the most difficult skills of all, but it's also the most worthwhile.